Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.O. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is a freezing February 14th, 2020 here on Cape Ann. And uh, this is our weekly video. We're going to look back and see how things went on eBay this week. There were some very good results. And uh, Catawiki, see what's going on on the, on the member pages and a few other things. Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention was the site was migrated this week and seemed to go very smoothly. I don't think there were hardly any interruptions at all, which I was very glad to see. The, the folks that did the job did a great job with it. And they're now setting about to do some uh, site optimization work and uh, on the new platform and uh, we'll be in good shape. Uh, on the member pages, some of you might have noticed we added a loading icon because a couple of those pages are enormous. And they're so big they can, they can take seven or eight seconds to load. Um, and we thought we'd put something on there to let you know that it is loading. It's just uh, there's so much material and it has to be pulled in um, you know, from all the different uh, vendors on the different sites, so it takes a little time. All right, any rate, uh, let's take a look here. One thing I wanted to mention was, uh, hold on here. Let's see, um, Rob Michael sale. Uh, that's that big sale we talked about. We did a video on it a week or two ago. Um, that's happening um, over in Bruges uh, and, and Belgium on uh, February 15th. It starts tomorrow. It's a two-day sale uh, full of stuff. It's a chock-a-block sale if you've checked it out. Um, it's uh, linked off the uh, landing members page, landing page, and all that good stuff. Uh, let's take a look. Hold on. We'll get over there. There it is. This is the sale. It's two parts. Uh, there is a lot. If you're a blue and white buyer, you really ought to check the sale out. There's a lot of late Ming blue and white on here, Kung Shi pieces, and uh, so forth. There's some very, very good examples and a very great pair of huge. There's also some very good Ming porcelain on there as well. You really want to check it out, right, if you haven't. And this is something that I came across this week that was. Uh, um, on, uh, I think this was on Invaluable or Live Auctioneer somewhere. This is going to be in a sale in a few weeks, and I wanted to point it out. It's one of my favorite things. It's an extremely rare 18th century Qinlong period uh, export painting on glass. And uh, the quality of this picture is just terrific. It's a, there's a fellow approaching a young lady. It looks like they're having a picnic along a lake. Here's the back of it and so on. This is a sale that's taking place down in Florida. Uh, but the quality and detail of this painting, uh, the painting on this is exceptional. And it's got a very modest opening bid. That's why I'm mentioning it. It's a two to $4,000 estimate. It should do much better than that. These are pretty rare. Uh, these reverse paintings on glass were done in China strictly for the export market. And the glass was actually imported into China for the artists to work on. The, the Chinese didn't make glass sheets like this, but the, uh, uh, the Europeans certainly did, and they brought them in highly collectible. And uh, this is uh, uh, Codner's office uh, auction down in uh, Dana Beach. It's happening in, in a couple of weeks. And if, you're, if you want to buy a wonderful painting, this is it, and it's big. It's 17 by 27 inches. This is a very big picture, uh, and I, I think it's going to do very well. It's a wonderful thing. But if you like great, authentic things in, in Chinese painting for the export market, this is something you want to check out. All right, get condition reports and do all that, of course. And then uh, let's see here. This was on uh, uh, on uh, eBay, I believe, last week. It's a, a double uh, double figure uh, carving, obviously late 19th century, but beautifully done. And uh, it went by. Oh, this was uh, Dr. Godfrog had this. Uh, a very nice carving, beautifully done probably boxwood, um, and it brought $447, which I don't think was at all unreasonable. This was a beautiful little carving. It had a, a minor a couple of splits in the wood, the way all these wooden carvings do. Uh, if you have them, you got to keep them in sort of humid areas of your house. Let them spend a few weeks in your bathroom every every once in a while and get some humidity and moisture into them. Uh, central heating and western houses uh, can crack these things. But anyway, this is a nice one. And it was good size. Uh, it was 17 centimeters tall or about uh, 7 inches tall. It was a nice example. And then over on uh, Invaluable this week, this thing went through. This was on the uh, on the member page. A beautiful um, uh, uh, Kang Shi uh, a uh, teapot, a very nice example with sort of a bamboo uh, uh, patterning and relief work running around it. Very nice example. And it did fine. It brought $1,600, but not an outrageous amount. These can often bring quite a bit more. This was over at Heinemann's in, in Chicago. It closed this week. And uh, the other thing that went through this week, if you're a Chinese export collector, um, this was, uh, on, on uh, I believe, on Invaluable as well. Uh, extremely rare. We had this on the page. Really, really rare piece of Fitzhugh. 
Uh, if you collect uh, Chinese uh, a late 18th, early 19th century export, this was a this was a gem, and it was in beautiful condition. Uh, pink Fitzhugh is, ex is is just very very rare, and uh, I think it, I think it went for a good price, but not a crazy price. This was also at Heinemann's. Uh, it went for $1,900, but a very rare model. The green ones you see all the time, the blue ones you see all the time, but pink is, is highly unusual. Very, very pretty. This was about a nine inch dish, as I recall, something like that. Was, was the dimensions on here? Nine and three quarter inches. Uh, chargers like this can bring six, seven thousand, um, but, but that's a nice, nice rare plate, and it appeared to be in nice condition. And then over here on uh, eBay was this. This was a very good buy. Um, uh, a really nice piece of Japanese Harado uh, in a bam formed in a bamboo shape, and it's got the very typical uh, painting technique that the Harado workers did. Very smooth, very subtle, very soft, and then these beautiful relief, this beautiful relief work dragon coming off of it. Something very typical of good Harado. Uh, they were able to do this modeling on the island when they made it. Harado started out making mostly just stuff for the, for the royal family and then they, they expanded of course. And it, look at this, it went for $540. That was a great buy. That was a really great buy. Uh, a very nice object. There it is. All right, and then moseying along uh, to this was the double gourd Juan Lee bottle that I talked about last week. And uh, I thought it was awfully nice, and I, I said, you know, if you can buy this thing, you know, I said it ought to, I think I said 1500 to 2000 I was off. This thing got a lot of interest. Um, but there are a lot of Wan Lee buyers out there from time to time that come around, especially for double gourds. And I think there's a pair of them or a pair of Kang Shi ones over on uh, – uh, on the member page right now. I forget who has it, but it's there. Uh, it might be Christie's. Any rate, this went for $4,200, which is a very good price. But it was in wonderful condition, and uh, let's hope the guy that bid on it pays for it. Uh, a lot of, most Wan Lee pieces sell uh, outside of China, so it probably probably get paid for. Um, and then on to this, the, uh, the Ming Dynasty uh, carved uh, 16th century uh, vase. Nice piece of Saladon, beautifully done. Uh, uh, good color, good carving all the way around. Uh, the mouth was in good condition. Often the mouths on these up here, um, they get all nicked out and chipped for some reason. This one isn't. This is in good shape. Here's a good shot of it top, bottom. There's the base, very typical base. Um, it was made with a, um, it looks like it was made with a hole in it for some reason. I don't know why. Might have had a stand. At any rate, it brought $1,691. Beautiful example. And uh, then this, this was a beast. This was, uh, I think, 19 inches tall, silver inlaid bronze Quan Yin, uh, uh, early to mid 19th century example, but very fine quality, nice color. And this thing just took off uh, at the end. It brought $12,100. It was on the uh, member page. I mean, no, this was on the eBay, uh, eBay page, on the newsletter page for a few days uh, all last week. It was a very nice piece. And if one of you got it, bravo. Silver inlaid, uh, very unusual example. Really, really nice. And then over here, this was also on. This was a dandy box. Uh, this is a 19th century example, probably early 19th century, um, fully uh, fitted with a nice interior. I hope you checked it out. It has this beautifully carved boxwood Buddha in the middle. We'll get to a closer shot of that in a, in a minute. And uh, it was just a, a, a terrific package, but beautifully made, good mounts on it, lacquer cabinet front. Uh, there's the Buddha. Uh, but notice the uh, the contemplative look of the face. The eyes are cast downward. Uh, the robes are all beautifully done. The uh, framework around it is nice. Uh, it was quite a thing. And there there it is. That's the cabinet open with all the drawers in it. Um, and, and there was a bunch of stuff in it, apparently. Odds and ends and jades and whatnot. I don't know how old those are. But at uh, any rate, the whole shebang went for $4,801, which I think was a very good buy for someone forgetting what, what you might find in it that, that, came, that the, the, the auctioneer threw in there. I doubt they came with it originally. He probably just was getting rid of stuff. But at any rate, heck of a nice thing. And uh, then on to this, this bottle form one Lee uh, vase uh, uh, with horses on it. Um, this is a, a very uh, popular pattern. You see this form fairly often. Nice piece. And uh, it brought $1,001. Uh, which is right about in there. That's about what they bring. And then this. This was nice. I, I, if you're a bronze collector, I hope you chase this down a little bit. 
This is a beautiful late Ming bronze um, with a wooden, a nicely done later wooden stand with low relief carving of uh, precious objects and all that. Here's a good picture of the side and the bottom. There's the interior all grunged out. This is a real one. It's a nice one. like the way the bottom looks. Lots of legitimate wear around the edges, so forth. Um, you can always ignore these these red tags, by the way, um, uh, just so you know. It doesn't mean any, it, it, people, I, I'm, I'm not saying that about this piece, but um, a, a lot of fakes turn up on the market and they use these fragmented red tags as though it was from an old collection. This was not a, a fake. This was, this was, this is what's, this one's legitimate. But uh, I just wanted to point that out. Don't, don't always be convinced by tags alone. At any rate, this brought $2,153, which I think was a pretty good buy. Um, uh, I've seen, we've seen these in the past go through here, and they bring over 3000 So I, I think maybe somebody got a very nice buy. I think the stand under it was probably worth two or 300 anyway. Nice object. Nice, nice object. And uh, this, the big bronze foo line that we talked about last week. Uh, nicely done. It's an incense burner. Uh, beautifully modeled, had a couple of minor nicks on it and things like that, but nothing at all significant. These were probably made originally in pairs. They nearly always were. Um, there's the uh, opening on the back where the cover goes, and uh, here you are. Okay, it looks like he's missing the cover, actually, in this. But at any rate, the, is what you're paying for is this, the sculpture, the profile, and the size. It was big, and it brought $3,328, which I think was a pretty good price. Not bad at all. And then we'll go mosey over to here. These books, uh, Regina Crowell and John Ayers did these books about over 20 years ago. And it's the Top Cappy uh, Sarray Museum Collection. I have these books. They're wonderful. Uh, and this was, a, they went fairly reasonably for what some of these have brought in the past. But this is Yuan and Ming Porcelain. And there's a very good introductory section in the here on uh, on the Yuan, the Ming Dynasty. For Celadon wares, they, do, uh, they explain in great detail how they were made, how they ended up in the, in, at the top copy in Istanbul. And then the third volume, of course, is Qing Dynasty Porcelain that was exported there. Uh, originally, the, the, it began in the Yuan Dynasty. Uh, blue and white porcelain was sent as tribute to the, to the court in Turkey, in Istanbul, because the Mongols were very interested in expanding their empire and expanding their trading areas, because the Mongols, more than anything, were traders. Just, uh, they loved trading and, and doing business, and they opened up trading routes and secured them um, from robbers and marauders uh, as much as they could across the empire uh, to, to broaden the Chinese economy. Because it was the largest, it was. It ended up being the largest empire in the history of the world. Physically, it was massive. It went from uh, the Pacific Ocean to the Mediterranean, basically. At any rate, they only went for. They went. I think this was a good buy. They went for nine hundred and thirty-six dollars. I've seen in the past these books bring over two thousand for the set, uh, but very nice. And then the Quanjan wire piece, the little covered uh, food pot, uh, looked innocent enough. Didn't look like, uh, you know, it looks, it looks like something you thought might not bring an awful lot of money. But this was a very nicely done example, beautifully done with a good script on it and so forth. It was in nice condition, and it brought $3,000 for the little, the little covered food pot. All right, and, and this is an interesting phenomenon with these because uh, back uh, 30 years ago, 25 years ago, these were sold uh, in antique shops all over New England, up and down the East Coast, and typically they were never more than maybe 80 or or $100 at the most. It's amazing how they've taken off. And then on to this, the uh, dragon-decorated uh, um, Chilson period Korean bottle vase. This was a very nice vase. The seller had it up as 19th century. I think it was probably 18th, late, later 18th century, but exceptional quality. It was, it was a nice thing, a nice piece of Korean ware, and it brought $2,370. Did really well. Did just fine in the end. And uh, then on to these, a pair of lotus form kangxi uh, with brown dressing uh, uh, dishes. And these were interesting. They were damaged. They had been stapled back together here. And I think there's a staple on this one. They had chipped rims. But the, the, the type and style is very popular. And the quality of the cobalt on these was excellent. I have to say that. They're only about seven or eight inches wide. And uh, they brought $326. Uh, in perfect condition, a pair of these can bring, you know, uh, pretty easily 1000 to 1500 So, you know, if you got those uh, because you didn't want to spend 1000 to 1500 it was a good buy. You know, there's no harm. And I kind of like staple repairs anyway. Um, at any rate, moving along to this, the uh, Famille Rose uh, uh, octagonal planter. 
this was a pretty one. And uh, it had been up before, and apparently it didn't get paid for, so it came back again. And I'm glad to say it did just as well this time as it did last time. It did just about exactly the same amount of money. I think the last time, maybe it brought $1,500. i would have to recheck, but somewhere right in there. So good. Uh, I, I hate it when people are forced to relist things, and they end up getting less money the second time through. Um, as a tip, though, um, uh, it doesn't always happen, but it often does. Um, your, sometimes sellers are better off if they have something that doesn't sell, reshoot it with a different background and put it up in about a month, and um, and then it won't be tagged with the, uh, the the displeasure of buyers who say, oh, they're running it through again. Something happened. I'm going to stay away from it. It's 99% of the time it's just because the buyer didn't pay for it. And if it was worth $1,500 last month, it's worth $1,500 this month. All right, now on to this, the armorial platter. This was a nice export, armorial platter. It had some orange peel on it, uh, good-looking center uh, decoration. Doesn't seem to have a lot of wear to it. And uh, it brought $710, which is pretty reasonable. And it was an 18th century platter. And it was, uh, how big was this thing? Uh, 12 inches. Uh, so it's not a huge one. This isn't one of those 18-inch monsters. It was 12 inches. Uh, but still, nice piece of armorial, and if you're an armorial collector, that was a good buy. And then on to this, Anglo-Indian silver. We don't include a lot of this stuff, but I like it. I've always liked Indian metalwares, beadry and all that. I used to have a beadry wear collection. Um, this is a very nice piece of silver, and seeing as today is Valentine's Day, it seems very appropriate to have this on here. This was a really pretty, pretty piece of silver. Uh, Indian silver can be unbelievably fine. Uh, they, they did great work, and uh, it brought $419, which is not a, a, a nutty price at all for that. Uh, it's a good piece. There are a lot of Anglo-Indian silver collectors roaming around, and it was good size. It was over a foot tall. This wasn't a little six-inch frame. This was uh, 34 centimeters, so it was about 13 inches tall. Nice thing. Nice, nice thing. Somebody got a good buy. And then over to this, this uh, a shaped rim uh, Chinese export platter in blue and white from the 18th century. And the, I was very pleased to see this. This is a really nice example uh, because the painting quality was just so good, so tight, so orderly. The shading was just excellent. And uh, it was made for the export market, so it doesn't get a lot of interest in China, luckily for everybody else. Um, and these, this went fairly reasonably, I think. This was, this is a beautiful piece of work, four hundred and one dollars. All right, and this was done more in the Chinese taste on a different, different type of object. It probably would have brought two or three thousand pretty easily. And uh, the size on this was uh, forty-two centimeters, so it was about sixteen inches in diameter, roughly. It was good size, nice looking thing. And then we have a lot here today, isn't there? Yeah. All right. Now on to this. The uh, uh, this is that that very lovely pair of Dewa covered jars that sold. I, I I mentioned this a few times. I just love these things. I should buy them, but I didn't. Um, they were up a few weeks ago, and they ended up selling for fifteen hundred dollars. And for some reason, they didn't get paid for, which absolutely baffles me. Um, I don't know why. And uh, they sold this time around for more seventeen hundred and twenty six. Um, so I was glad to see that, and hopefully they do sell, uh, they do get paid for and ship this time. Those were wonderful, and I still think they were a very, very good buy. And then on to this. This was an excellent Chinese export fan with its case. Um, always check these listings with fans if they have their cases because it really adds to the interest. But this was a, a beautiful case. Uh, is uh, first half of the uh, uh, 19th century, 18. 10 to 1830, somewhere in there. But what was great about it was it had a, it was a port scene with uh, Western ships uh, coming in. And uh, this is a, a very uh, interesting little fan. Uh, when you, when you, you see them, tip, the typical Chinese figures on them, um, you know, and then the back has flowers or something. Those are the sort of standard export models that they did. And every once in a while, they did them with ships or pictures of the Hongs, this sort of thing. That might be Macau in the back. I'm not sure. I'd have to look up the, uh, the background image of that island. But at any rate, um, maybe one of you watching knows it just off the top of your head. I don't. Uh, but here it is, uh, beautifully done. Oh, it's Juan Poa, I think. Okay. At any rate, um, there it is. And uh, look at this. There are even people rigging the boat and all that. This was a very nice fan. And it got a lot of interest. It sold for $1,915 which for a China trade collector is not a bad price with the box, with the box. And it was in good condition for an early fan. 
All right, and then over here in the Satsuma, nice Satsuma, incense burner, uh, late Meiji period, of course, uh, beautifully decorated with all the uh, figures and the seated boy on top with his with holding a flower, just a lovely thing. And look at this, this was very reasonable, $516. That was a good buy for a nice piece of Satsuma, really, really was. Uh, lots of landscape figures and uh, all that stuff, very well done. And then on to this, the, uh, the big 40 centimeter Kung Shi jar with the lid. Uh, this was over on uh, um, um, Katawiki. Uh, there's some good stuff on Katawiki. And as I mentioned last week, we're, we're trying to focus, include more and more things and find things on there that are not reserved. Because I, I think some of the Katawiki sellers go overboard with their reserves and they just keep running it through. And I think they make it, they, they, they're hurting themselves and they're not helping the site at all. Oh, one other thing about Katawiki. I got, I, I had a mention um, a week or so ago, somebody asked on the uh, a reply to one of the videos is, uh, you know, why can't I buy stuff? I'm in Canada. There are a few countries that uh, they don't ship to. And I, and I don't know why. I think it's dumb. But they don't ship to Canada. They don't ship to Australia. I sent them a note, uh, somebody over there, and I heard back from them. And they said they are working on trying to expand it. I don't know what the problem is. I've never been able to get a satisfactory answer. Why shipping to the United States is different than shipping to Canada. It's not. Um, ditto for Australia. Australia has some uh, some rather tight box regulations, and shipping in and out of there is fairly expensive. But other than that, I can't imagine why they wouldn't wouldn't expand to those markets. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me at all. But anyway, this lovely big jar brought three thousand and eighty nine dollars, which is right in the range, right in the range for these. So it was very reasonable. I don't think it was an, un un an overpay at all because it had the lid, which is always nice. And then over to this. They had this posted um, on, um, on uh, Katawiki. I think this was on Katawiki. I have to check in a second. But anyway, they had this listed as just 18 cents. It was actually a Kung Shi bottle. And it was a nice one. It, had the, it, had the, it was a guglet. And it's got these uh, ribs at the top and so on and so forth. It was a beautiful example. It went for $686. All right. Oh, no, they had it 17th or 18th century. Okay, yeah. Um, that's, they should have said Kung Shi, though. I don't know why he didn't. Yeah, well. It's okay. It did all right, but I think it might have done a little better with a different description. And then on to this was that uh, the, the uh, shrine, the portable shrine with that beautiful, beautiful carving of the Buddha in it. I just like this. This was a dandy little one. It wasn't a big one. It wasn't like the big ones that sold a, a week ago for a thousand bucks. It was a, this thing was about uh, 10 or so inches tall or nine inches tall or something. Um, what was the size of this thing? Uh, 19 centimeters. So it was uh, about seven inches tall. Uh, or so, and uh, it brought four hundred and forty-one dollars, but it also was inscribed. And that was a nice, nice piece to collect. It was Edo period. Okay, and then over to this, the Kangshi. Uh, this was on Katawiki. It was in their featured sale. Really nice Kangshi period um, um, of Femi Ver or Wusai, rather, uh, 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 covered vessel. It was a very unusual form. That was what was cool about this. The bottom half of it looked like a bowl, and then it looked like a bowl with the terrine sitting in it, and then this nice cover. And uh, this was in that uh, specialized sale they had. Unfortunately, a lot of the stuff in the sale didn't sell, and that was because they had reserves on everything. Um, you know, uh, the, these, these reserves, the sellers, I'm, I'm going to hammer on reserves, I think, periodically, because um, selling with reserves are, are, are very dangerous uh, because the bidders keep f bits, putting in bids and keep being told, oh, the reserve's not met, the reserve's not met. And uh, a lot of people, myself included, if I start fighting heavy reserves, I walk away. I just walk away. Um, if the guy wants to sell it at auction, then sell it at auction. Okay, it's an auction, but don't go in putting protection on everything. And I'll tell you a little secret. Um, over the years, we've sold some very, very good things in New York at Christie's in particular. And uh, I actually fight with them to lower estimates and lower reserves. Push them down, push them down. You want to encourage competition. And every single time we've done that, we ended up bringing considerably more than the high estimate they suggested originally. All right, it's very psychological. Uh, but don't discourage participation with big reserves or big estimates. You just you just hurting yourself. Okay, all right. And now on to this. This was very nice. This was a they they had it as Chin Lung. I think it's probably Yong Chen, but a really nice plate. Very very pretty. Very very pretty plate. 
Uh, the enamels were all good. They were all bright and strong, and there was lots of pink in it. I love that. Really, really, that really jumps out at you. And look at this, $122. It was a very nice buy. It was about a seven or eight inch plate. Um, but beautiful, beautiful enameling on it. Uh, uh, Katowiki, when they, when, it was unreserved. So it was a very good buy. You know, the guy didn't put, I want $400 on it. It wasn't worth that, but it was worth 122 And uh, it was a nice thing to, 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 for someone to collect, build up some loyalty uh, as a customer. All right, and then on to this. This is nice later 18th century willow and peony pattern. Um, uh, chin lung plate, uh, quite pretty, nice one. I like the shaping on the rim on this, and it went for $110. Um, uh, I think I think the the Famille Rose plate we just looked at was a, a, was a, a better buy maybe for a little more money. But if you like blue and white, that was a good tight example. And then on to the Japanese piece. This was another nice buy, beautiful piece of late 17th century Japanese Arita wear. Little uh, jug with the uh, handle, obviously, but very nice decoration, and it looked to be in quite good shape all the way around. And as you know, Japanese or early Japanese porcelain um, is selling these days very reasonably. If you like to collect late 17th century uh, blue and white, uh, the Japanese stuff is very reasonable because the Japanese art market more or less impaled itself and collapsed a few years ago, back in the 90s, and never really recovered. But this went for just four hundred and ninety-six dollars. In fact, then that that this juglet would have brought probably fifteen hundred to twenty-five hundred dollars pretty comfortably. At any rate, so that's the way that goes. But if you're if you're looking for a nice area to get into, Japanese Arita, early Japanese Arita, early Japanese Amari, is a wonderful category, and it won't break your wallet. And it's really interesting stuff. All right, now let's hop over here and see what's coming up uh, next week. Um, uh, just a few things. One of the things I wanted to mention was there was a lot of Yixing buyers out there. And this is a piece of Yixing that's on, um, who is this right now, on Valuable right now. A very nice example. It's a tea caddy, probably late Ming, maybe early Qing with a pewter lid, but the shape of it was very nice. I wish he included more pictures without the lid, without the cover on it. If it interests you, get a hold of them and, and uh, uh, off, off the member, they have links and stuff and get a hold of them. Get a condition report and see what's underneath this dome uh, because uh, I don't like the fact that they left the cover on there because this has a neck on it and I'm wondering if it's damaged or chipped. It ra raises a question, it may be absolutely fine, but uh, you know, these, guys, these auctioneers on, 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 on live auctioneers and invaluable, I don't understand why they use just one picture. I think that's crazy. But at any rate, they do. Um, show lots of pictures. You do better. And then uh, this is the, uh, what page is this? There's a whole lot of stuff on here, including the, the uh, um, Rob Michael sales. Oh, yeah, and we added to the, the finished auctions this week, too. There was some uh, nice things on there. And uh, let's see what's going on. This is coming up on Catawiki. This closes... Um, um, did this close already or no this closes in one day that's what it is right this is uh, part of that Suba collection if you're a Japanese uh, Suba collector or metals collector uh, this is another very very nice little example um, of, with gilded relief worked a nice old iron sword Suba beautiful example really art just great and it's up to $211 it closes tomorrow Saturday um, so if you like Japanese metalwares check out this is on the newsletter page uh, check it out. If you if you don't get the bit amount newsletter notifications on Friday and you just come to the site, you know, a few days later, you're going to miss things like this. This closes Saturday. So if you if you haven't signed up for the newsletter, it's completely free. Just sign up for it and you'll get an email on Friday night telling you what's, uh, um, you know, leading you over to what's been added and changed on the uh, weekly auction offerings. All righty. And uh, then on to these. These are on Katawiki right now. These are wonderful. It's a big pair of ruffle rim, uh, uh, um, probably Meiji period, late Edo Meiji, somewhere in there, Meiji period, lacquered porcelain. They did do lacquered porcelain uh, 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 starting in the 18th century. There's some great examples. Um, and here is one uh, a pair of vases. These are about, I think, 19 inches tall each. And uh, they're evidently in good shape, except for the uh, minor chipping around the bottom, which is very common on these. All right, sometimes they get they get kept in dishes with water under them, or another uh, if they put plants and flowers in them and things like that, or they get arranged somehow, and the bases get a little nicked. But the decoration is excellent. These are up to just twenty nine dollars, and uh, they're being sold by a seller. Um, uh, let's see here, where's this seller? 
it doesn't say. But at any rate, the shipping cost from uh, wherever they are to here is only $71, which I think is very reasonable. They're up to $29, bucks, um, and they close on Sunday. Um, if you like good, nice Japanese lacquer or you, you'd like to own a pair of vases, uh, th these would be a good choice. They're 46 centimeters, so about 18 and a half inches tall. Nice examples. And then this is on uh, right now on either Invaluable or Live Auctioneers. A very nice, you know, it's on the member page. But the really, really nifty um, Kangshi Amari uh, jar. And what I like about it is the brightness of the colors. The colors are very strong. Um, it was shot under a very bright light, but the colors are good. The decoration is good. And the porcelain looks particularly white. I think it's a nice thing. And then over here on Catawarki is this wonderful scroll painting. This is part of a collection that comes from a, a professor or something over in, the, uh, in Europe that they're dealing with. And uh, this is a really nice uh, scroll. Uh, it's a celestial uh, uh, you know, figure riding the dragon through the clouds. Um, dragons in the clouds are very reminiscent of Sung paintings and all that. But this is a beautiful example. And it's only up to $176. And it closes in two days. This also closes on Sunday. It is on Katawiki. It'll be on the uh, pages. And they also have this, a nice Kangxi uh, uh, export dish. This is, one, this is one of those ones that has the sort of wildly done dragons, the sort of com combined clouds and all kinds of elements and a dragon head. And, and you see these periodically. Um, and it's up to $187. And this closes also in a couple of days. And uh, this, if you're a Celadon buyer, on, uh, check this out on Catawiki. This is a nice piece of Ming Celadon, um, uh, 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 late 15th, early 16th century Long Quan brush washer. Um, it's a very pretty example. It looks to be in nice shape. It's up to $505. I don't want to bring a, more than triple that. It is, yeah, it's seven inches in diameter, but very, very pretty, really pretty, nice object and uh, in good shape. And then this, this is a, a very nice Republic period Famille Rose uh, vase with uh, this good deep dark blue cobalt uh, decoration on it. It is Republic period. It is nicely done all the way around. There's the bottom of it, uh, looks fine to me. Um, excellent quality. It's up to $243 uh, um, so far, and it has a reserve on it. I don't know what the guy has on it for a reserve. Maybe email him and ask him. It closes in a couple days, but that's a heck of a nice vase, and a, a reasonable price for that is, uh, you know, $1,500 to $2,000, uh, but I, I think they're crazy to put those reserves on there. And then this. This is one of the neatest things I've seen on here. I don't understand the shipping price. It may be a typo, uh, but this is a big piece of glazeware. They call it Siwan, Siwan ware. I'm not sure I'd call it that, but it's a beautiful standing Kuan Yin holding an amber colored vase, uh, but nice color, aubergine, turquoise, just lovely. Um, they have it listed as Re late Qing or Republic. I don't think it's a Republic. I think it's probably mid 19th century. And it is big, 66 centimeters tall. So it's around, you know, 26 or seven inches tall. It's quite large. Uh, but the shipping cost to the U.S. seems a little on the high side. You might be able to have to work that out. They have it down for $418. And there is a reserve on this, but it's only up to 2 bucks. Um, I think the shipping cost just killed this. Uh, it's too bad. That was a nice thing. Um, and I, I hope somebody gets it and they can work out that shipping. And then lastly is this. There's other stuff, too, that will be on the newsletter page and on the uh, for Katawiki and eBay. But this is a nice uh, uh, export uh, uh, they call these. They used to call these gin bottles, but it's a blue and white uh, Kung Shi period or so um, uh, vase. And uh, let's see what this up to. Uh, $391. It doesn't seem to have a reserve on it, so that's it. And that's about it for the week. There's a lot going on. We've got a lot of stuff. As, as you know, we transitioned the site over, so it'll, it'll be a little more uh, able to handle the volumes. And uh, thanks, thank you again to those of you who have subscribed to the member pages. I do appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed to us yet on here on YouTube, hit the subscribe button and get notified. Hit the notification bell, and you'll be told when we put up our new videos each week. We're working on a couple of other videos right now that we'll hopefully we'll get out in the next week or two. And uh, then, of course, we're going to have uh, more videos uh, when the uh, auction catalogs and so forth for the, for the March sales become available. We'll sort of do the, the regular preview and take a look. And uh, this time around, if, if we're able, we'll try to uh, uh, record some of the sales. We can't always g get the thing to do it, but uh, we're going to try. And um, uh, come over to bidamount.com and sign up and subscribe, visit the forum, and 
all that good stuff. And, and subscribe to the global pages if you want a lot broader menu of things to pick from each week. Um, we go through there. We handpick everything that ends up on the pages, just like we do with the newsletter page. All right. And uh, so there it is. It was a pretty good week. There was a lot going on. The prices were good. Uh, there seems to be a fair bit of stuff coming into the market. Uh, global events don't seem to be too adversely affecting things, which is a good sign. We don't want to see uh, economic turn slowdowns or people uh, uh, stopping spending their money and putting things up for sale because they all go hand in hand. So I think you're going to see if the prices and things continue as they are. Um, uh, hopefully uh, the market will remain very nice and healthy right through the spring, summer, and fall. All right. Thanks so much for watching, and uh, have a wonderful weekend. Stay warm out there, and uh, happy Valentine's Day to, to, uh, to uh, everybody. All right. See you all next week. Bye-bye.